Warning, District Queen contains explicit material not suitable for minors. Parental discretion is advised. You are now listening to District Queen. Close the door. So what's it gonna be? Uh. Really, dude? Come on, cause I don't got all goddamn day. Uh, um. What you nervous for? I ain't the police or nothing. It's it's not that. Then what is? <laughs> oh, this your first time with a bitch like me, huh? Uh, afraid so. <laughs> okay. I'll make this easy for you, sweetie. Do you want to fuck me? Or do you want me to suck that old ass dick of yours? B you got my money? Yes. Come here, sweetheart. Oh my God! Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh! Well, that didn't take long. You could see yourself out. Keep it moving, motherfucker. I'm not here for you. Who the fuck are you? Honey, I'm the woman that's gonna change your life. I'm queen. Is that thing on? Yes, it is. Well, you're the expert. How does this work? Um, I start by asking you a simple question, and you simply answer any way you see fit. Fair enough. Let's get on with it. I'm Patrice Hendricks of the Atlanta Constitute, and you are? These days, I'm known as Queen Benajay, but the name on my birth certificate reads Margot Lay. For purposes of this interview, would you rather I call you Miss Benajay? Or Miss Lane? Queen is fine. Margot died several years ago. Okay, Queen. What is it that you do? In the present, I'm authoring my memoirs. And what line of work were you in, involved in prior to this encounter? I manage opportune women in the accommodation of the affluent who prefer to, let's say, indulge themselves in very stimulating activities. In layman's terms, please? I was a madam. I provided wealthy and powerful people with some of the most beautiful women to ever grace this earth to perform whatever fetish and or activity they wanted for a nominal fee. Okay, let's start from the beginning. You said Marco Lane died several years ago. Who was Marco Lane? Where did she grow up? Where did she go to school? And so forth. That information is irrelevant. Why don't we just skip to the good part? And, and what exactly is the good part? Hartsville, Jackson. The airport? Yes. I was a flight attendant and we had just gotten back from Kalamazoo, Minnesota. If I never see snow again, it'll be too soon. Oh, come on. It was not that bad. <laughs> we were stuck on a two-day layover in a city whose high was four degrees. 
and it was the weekend. Who could possibly shake that ass when it's that cold? Maybe if you shook your ass there like you do here, you would have been warm. <laughs> Very funny. Coming from the homebody queen. When was the last time you popped that pussy for a real nigga? Hmm? That is none of your business, okay? And that's when I saw him again. Who do you see? Him. The epitome of tall, dark, and handsome. To be honest, words can't describe how captivating he was. He was well-groomed from head to toe. Always having appeared to be fresh from the barber shop and having stopped at the nail shop for good measure. His chocolate skin and broad shoulders draped under an immaculate tailor suit and his walk, honey. His walk was one way cool and he oozed of confidence. Not to mention he smelled so good I'd immediately soak my panties. <clears throat> I saw him often in the airport. I assumed he was some big shot businessman globe trotting on a company dime. More times than not, he was accompanied by a woman or two. But even if he was alone, I just admire him from afar. Ooh, girl, there go your man. Here you go. Why don't you ever say something to him? What? You're crazy. I wouldn't know what to say, for one. And for two, he's always with different women. Please. A man that fine, whatever company looking to seal a business deal with him, knows they're going to need a skirt to do the job. And not just any old bitch either. One of them sexy but intelligent bitches. <laughs> okay, you really need to stop watching so much scandal. Girl, I love me some Olivia Pope. That's just sad. <laughs> When I got home, everything was, well, the same. Mailbox one. You have 15 old messages. Margo, it's your mother. I find it extremely repulsive that today and age I'm sent to your home answer machine. Who still has a home phone, let alone an answer machine? Anyway, I would invite you to dinner with your father and I, but Lord knows you will give some sarc excuse not to. Love you. That night I couldn't sleep. All I could think about was that beautiful man. I wish I could muster up the courage to at least ask him his name in hopes that he won't know mine. Hello. Hello, Margo. We have a crew grounded in Florida due to some bad weather. Would you be interested in picking up a flight to London? Sure. Great. We'll need you at the airport in two hours. Okay, no problem. Finally, a trip worth taking. Plus, I could use the overtime. All the attendants with seniority get the overseas trips. I'd gladly break the monotony of my regimented life. I knew you was gonna say yes to this flight. I didn't have anything else better to do. I'm surprised you took it being NBA All-Star Weekend. That's next week, and I always want to ride one of those double-decker buses. I can't with you. <laughs> London was gloomy, but a great change of pace nonetheless. We only had a day to ourselves, but Veronica and I made the best of it. We had fish and chips and rode a double-decker bus. All in all, I experienced enough to want to come back, but it was over pretty fast. At noon, the passengers began filling up the 757 jet. I was called to the cockpit, and the captain informed me we would be taking off soon. Upon my exit, I almost hit a passenger with the cockpit door as they boarded the plane. Uh, shit. S excuse me. No, excuse me. It was totally my fault. I was so embarrassed, I almost didn't realize it was my ebony dream come to life. It's fine, really. If I would have boarded on time, this would never have happened. Our eyes locked as I was lost for words. I should be getting to my seat now. Oh, um, yes. <sighs> Girl, what happened? Did you get his name, number, Instagram, something? No. What? I was so ashamed that I had my chance to dead to rights and fumbled that I worked and coached the entire eight-hour ride from London to Atlanta. Thank you for flying with one train. It was a pleasure to service you to your flight to Atlanta. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Well, there she is. 
seems like I haven't seen your ass in eight hours. Don't start, V. I couldn't work in first class after, you know, I looked pitiful. It couldn't have been that bad. It was probably worse. I don't think so. Trust me. As we exited the terminal, lo and behold, he was standing there waiting. And for me. I just spent eight hours running interference for your ass. Don't fuck this up. Hey, um, hello. We never got a chance to formally meet. My name is Namdi. District Queen is a Visionaire Her Productions, created by Akia McKnight, written and directed by Zell Gaiman, sound designed by Tahir Elzie, starring Makia Jeter, Phoenix Vincent, and Kalima Gaston. Next time on District Queen. Oh, oh my, son, what's wrong? Don't you dare ever set me up like that again. Uh, what can I say? Some of our clients have peculiar tastes. I mean, for the price he paid to be a toilet, I thought you could handle it.